Have you ever had a conversation with a friend talking about games that don't exist like, oh, they should make a game like this, or what if they had a game like this? Well, today we're going to be going over a list of five games that you probably never heard of, and they're quite insane. A few of these games are brand new, but believe it or not, some of them are also really old. So sit back, relax, grab a snack, because you're in for a treat. And for our number five spot, we have Mercenaries. Playground of Destruction. I personally don't remember the storyline being as depressing as it really is playing it as a kid, but this game was amazing, bro. Now, like deadass, you know it was a good game if the Xbox logo was literally on the side of it. Like, come on. But basically, you play as this diehard America adrenaline junkie Mohawks military dude in this huge, vast open world of modern North Korea. Well, a fictional depiction of it, at least. The storyline of this game was quite dark, but at the same time, it was really cool and nostalgic, especially if you played it as a kid, but a lot of people were teenagers around this time. Me personally i was like four or five years old like in just cause you're able to call in vehicles weapons you could also destroy buildings as well which is quite insane for this type of game for this time frame I honestly wouldn't doubt if just cause took some inspiration out of this game to be honest like to be real all they did was lighten the game up and make the buildings non-destructible but it's almost the same damn thing except unlike in just cause in mercenaries if you drive around the map you can actually hear the actual terror and horror that's going on in this war zone of a map that you're playing on this playground that you're playing on of destruction it almost seems like they got real life war ambience if not they was really cooking up in the studio with this one but if you happen to be looking for a mission impossible list adrenaline in the rush type of game this is definitely a good one and number four we have the jack and daxter series created by naughty dog the same studio that made last of us except for this game was just so charming in its own way the game opens up you're playing as this boy named jack and there's this friend named daxter who eventually falls into a huge pool of dark ego turning him into some sort of ferret wombat looking thing and solely based off the artifacts and items around the island you can tell that the timeline of this game is in some sort of distant future. The currency of these precursor eggs are created by these giant precursor gods from some sort of other world. And there's all these different egos. And Jack's dad or father figure in this game, he's a green sage. Basically, the green ego heals or some sort of healing formula. As you fight your way through all the different enemies in the game, you eventually come to the dark ego sage at the end of the game. And once you defeat him, you guys come across this gateway that opens a doorway in the second game that takes them to the future. Or more so, the further, further, further future since they actually find find the island that they originated from in the game and in the second one jack gets captured he's held captive they inject dark ego into him and it gives you an ability to turn you into a dark ego demon besides that you're stuck in this futuristic city with flying cars you get these guns that you can shoot you can actually steal the flying cars as well it's actually really cool and in the third game there's this whole war that breaks out with the metalheads and then you're sent to some wasteland that's kind of like mad max and then you do the whole mad max thing and you come across this precursor god temple and you unlock light ego which is some sort of angelic power i gotta admit though the bosses in jack 3 were quite intense for that time frame but if you're looking for an action adventure game that's semi-futuristic and you can also have superpowers jack and dax is for you now is the universe connected to ratchet and clank I'm gonna leave that one up to you to decide. And in number three spot, we have LA Noir. Although this game was somewhat popular, I feel like today's generation, like the iPad kids don't know about it and they deserve to hear about it because it was an amazing game. Made by Rockstar Games, the same company that created Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption, except for in this game, you play as a cop slash detective in the city of LA or Los Angeles, California. The storyline gets quite intense. The map is absolutely huge and the action is just there, bro. Rockstar also pays so much attention to details, such as when you interview people in the game, game you can actually judge based off their facial expressions there's so many different tactics in this game that you can actually use in real life such as if you're a cop you know how to actually interview people like a witness and you can tell if they're lying or not or if you're a witness you know how to keep your composure or if you're trying to keep something secret <laughs> do not use this game to learn stuff to commit crimes I'm just letting you guys know but if you're somebody that is looking for more of a law and order type of game more cops and robber type of game LSPDFR type of game LA Noir is for you and then at number two spot, we have Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Now, if you played Elden Ring, you most likely heard of this game. But if you haven't heard of it, but also like games that will serve up a good boss fight and also love anime, listen up real quick. In this game, you play as a shinobi in middle-aged Japan that goes to adventures fighting a bunch of enemies and bosses in order to protect the Lord of Ashina. In my opinion, if I can compare any anime to this video game, I would have to say that this game would give off a huge Demon Slayer vibe for sure. There's different abilities that you unlock throughout the game and they can actually help you fight other bosses in the game and if you don't have these abilities bro you're not gonna get past some of these bosses i can guarantee you there's even elemental abilities like lightning and fucking fire and shit it's a really cool game i can kind of say that this game is open world it's just a bunch of levels that are all connected to each other but it's not like an open world like elden ring if you know what i mean but each different area in the map carries unique enemies that have their own different power levels and abilities oh i also forgot to mention the more you die you actually lose xp and you lose power so that means you have to go farm the weaker enemies to get stronger again and there's also this wild 
virus in the game called dragon rot so the more you die in the game somebody else in the game that will give you items or valuable information will catch it probably eventually die unless you cure them but overall if you're looking for some anime level boss fights Sekiro is for you go get it right now bro I promise you you'll love it coming in the number one spot we have star citizen although star citizen is only on pc i can guarantee you that star citizen is better than no man's sky and starfield combined like the best way to really put it imagine an open universe game combined with like some destiny some halo some tarkov some rainbow six call of duty shit i would even say a space surgeon of sea of thieves even solely because you can board other people's ship and steal their shit and what makes this game unique compared to starfield or no man's sky is that you can actually buy weapons you can customize Customize your ship, buy weapons for your ship, fly in and out of the planet's atmosphere, actually land your ship wherever you want on some of the planets, or at least majority of them, even the moons, you can go to the moons. The scale of this game is absolutely insane. Basically saying if you want an open universe game that has absolutely no loading screens, Star Citizen is for you, bro. When I mean no loading screens, if you jump from one side of the solar system to the other, you have to sit through the whole jump. And depending on your ship, it might not take that long. But be warned though, you can get ran up on at any moment in time. You can also be stranded on any planet, any moon in the middle of nowhere, away from civilization or even in the middle of space if you run out of fuel so you really got to be careful i promise you bro you could have millions of dollars worth of shit and lose it all just like that and most importantly the realism in this game is something else like getting shot in the arm or the leg or even running out of oxygen is a thing too kind of like in gtrp you can be left staggered or incapacitated basically leaving you like crippled on the ground until somebody comes saves you or if you die anyway guys that is the end of this video and that is my personal list of games that you guys definitely got to check out if you guys get the chance and if any of you that are watching this have played any of these games which one out of this list is your favorite one and let me know in the comment section why because you know or no we could connect somehow my personal favorite out this entire list me personally i'm gonna have to say is jack and daxter i just have a huge childhood love to that game and i will always love it forever and i still play it till this day you guys can use code base to check out for 30 percent off on your gfield purchases and until next time remember this one thing there's only one of you i love you Peace.